do you know about chemical warfare? Some people think of the use of chemicals in war as dating from World War I. However, soldier, that's not true. Chemical warfare is almost as old as warfare itself and antedates the use of gunpowder in the Western world by many centuries. One of the first recorded instances of the use of gas in warfare was during the ancient Greek wars at the siege of Plataea, when the attackers burned pitch and sulfur under the walls of the city to stupefy the defenders. Another early use of chemicals was made by King Charles XII of Sweden in 1701, when the Russians were deployed behind the Divina River holding up his advance. He produced a smoke screen by burning dampened hay and straw, which he had collected on his side of the river, and with a favorable wind, produced a large smoke screen, under cover of which he crossed the river with his army at an unexpected point and was deployed for battle before the Russians realized what was happening. However, before the age of science and when chemistry was regarded as black magic, the soldier had to rely for chemical agents on what he could find in nature, such as pitch, tar, sulfur, and straw most of which was, generally speaking, quite inefficient and bulky to carry. The first modern effective use of chemical agents in war was made by the Germans in 1950. The use of chemicals increased until by the end of the war, the use of gas and smoke was planned in each operation. Approximately one-third of the battle casualties our forces suffered in 1917-1918 in France was from gas. As a result of this experience, the Chemical Warfare Service was made a separate branch of the Army by the National Defense Act of Congress on July 1st, 1920. The Chemical Warfare Service is headed by the Chief of CWS, who is in the War Department in Washington, D.C. Major General William N. Porter is the present Chief. He directs the activities of the Chemical Warfare Service from the War Department. The Chemical Warfare Service is responsible for the research and development of new war gases and weapons in which to employ them, and for all chemical warfare protective equipment. It is also responsible for the manufacture, procurement, and issue of these items, and is charged with the doctrine for chemical combatant troops and chemical service troops. This is the research center of the Technical Command at Edgewood Arsenal, Maryland. It is the largest laboratory and coordinates the research carried out at other laboratories. In these laboratories have been found and the engineering work done on our war gases and the weapons to project them. Samples of gases captured from the Japs in the South Pacific and samples procured from Germany by secret agents have also been analyzed here. This is the Chemical Warfare Laboratory at Columbia University which works on particular problems given to it by the Chief of the Technical Command at Edgewood Arsenal. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology, located in Boston, is the third research and development laboratory of the Chemical Warfare Service. This is the manufacturing arsenal at Edgewood Arsenal, Maryland. Here were made the incendiary bombs which General Doolittle dropped on Tokyo in the first few weeks of the war. The Huntsville Chemical Warfare Arsenal is the largest we have, and probably the largest chemical warfare arsenal in the world. This is a new arsenal started at the beginning of the present emergency. It is now in production and can manufacture more mustard gas in one day than was manufactured by us in all of World War I. This is another new arsenal, the Pine Bluff Chemical Warfare Arsenal. It also has a large capacity and is located well back from the seacoast. Here on the outskirts of Denver, Colorado, is the newest of our arsenals, the Rocky Mountain Chemical Warfare Arsenal. It is located completely out of the range of any possible air threat. Here you see incendiary bombs being filled, which will probably be falling on Berlin by the time you see this picture. 
The items of equipment you have just seen being manufactured are stored in chemical warfare depots until they're needed for issue to troops. Out on the Great Salt Lake Desert of Utah is located the Deseret Chemical Warfare Depot, where great quantities of chemical agents are stored in bulk. You're looking at 70,000 drums of mustard gas, which is just a part of what we're holding for the day when the Japs or Germans want to start something. This is part of the Eastern Chemical Warfare Depot, located at Edgewood Arsenal, and more gas waiting for the Germans and Japs. This is a portion of the Gulf Chemical Warfare Depot at Huntsville Arsenal, Alabama. These incendiary bombs are starting on a long trip, which will end in a German war industry plant. Still more gas for anyone who wants to start it. Also at Edgewood Arsenal, the cradle of chemical warfare in this country, is located the Chemical Warfare School, where officers and enlisted men are sent for higher training. Under the commandant of the school is also the Chemical Warfare Officers Candidate School. To this school are sent outstanding enlisted men. The successful students who graduate are commissioned as second lieutenants in the Chemical Warfare Service. So you see, although you are now at the bottom of the ladder and are serving your first few days as a private, if you demonstrate to your company commanders and those above you that you have what it takes, you may become a commissioned officer. The opportunity is open to all, regardless of race and color or any college degrees which you may or may not have. It is just a question of your own ability and your desire to work and prove your worth for such an opportunity. The Chemical Warfare Board at Edgewood Arsenal tests all chemical equipment and makes recommendations for its improvement and future development. Training Aids Division is also located at Edgewood Arsenal, Maryland. This section tests procedures and writes all War Department technical and training manuals on chemical warfare. They also supervise the making of film strips and assist in the preparation of training films. There are many battalions of combatant chemical troops. The mission of these troops is to fire smoke and high explosives and to be ready with their special weapons to fire gas for retaliation when the Axis starts chemical warfare. Chemical battalions fired the smoke screens which covered the landings and systems. The second chemical battalion was commended in orders for its outstanding work throughout the Sicilian campaign. Chemical air operation companies are assigned to the air forces and operate on advanced air bases and the theaters of operation. The other chemical service units, including chemical depot companies, chemical maintenance companies, chemical smoke generator companies, chemical decontaminating companies, and chemical field processing companies, are assigned to ground forces and army service forces after their training. This is the beginning of the smoke screen that protected Salerno from German air attack. Our smoke generator companies are now protecting the harbor and port facilities being used in the Mediterranean. And finally, we bring you to Camp Cybert, Alabama, where are located the Chemical Warfare Service Unit Training Center and Replacement Training Center. The Replacement Training Center trains individuals as lost replacements to keep the units which have suffered battle casualties overseas up to strength. At the Unit Training Center, newly activated units are thoroughly trained and prepared to go overseas to carry the fight to the enemy. You are now members of a big team which is in the fight. 